here we go. So I am the Geeky Agent, Tony from Remax here in Bimbrook, Ontario, just a little portion of the greater city of Hamilton, Ontario. And today we are going to be talking about new mortgage rules that were just announced or sort of finalized, I guess, this morning. Uh, by the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions of Canada. So this applies right across Canada. So if you've been planning on uh, buying a home or getting a mortgage in the next uh, oh, few months before January 1st, now is a really good time to do it because some changes are coming into effect on January 1st, which is going to or which are going to affect the amount of home that you're going to be able to afford. So we're just going to wait a couple of seconds here. We've got a bunch of people jumping on. Jesse Peters is on there. Hey, Jesse, how you doing? Uh, Rob Butrelli, as always, is tuning in. Awesome. Ron James, DJ Duby, which I always like to call Dubé, but Duby is here. Ron, Gabriel, a whole bunch of people jumping on the line there. So I will look down every so often because I got my phone here and I'll be just looking to see if you have any questions at all. Please feel free to post them below. I will try to answer them. There is a slight lag, so it might take me a few seconds to actually see it and talk to you and let you know what's going on. But uh, I will try to answer as best I can. I am not a mortgage expert, but I do have a fairly decent idea of what is happening with the new mortgage rules. And I talk to a lot of mortgage people all the time. I try to stay informed so I can keep you informed. So let's kind of get into it, I guess. That's probably the best thing to do. It is 1230 now. So if you're a little bit late, you're a little bit late. What can I say? So we're going to just switch over here. And as I mentioned, OSFI, the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, announced this morning that they will be uh, introducing new regulations on Canadian mortgages, specifically to what are called the uninsured mortgages. So there are two different types of mortgages, basically, in Canada. And we're not talking about fixed or variable and all that sort of stuff. We're looking at uh, mortgage, uh, mortgages where people put down less than 20% of a down payment. Those are called high ratio mortgage because they're looking at the loan to value. So the loan portion, uh, your minimum down payment could be 5%, which means that you owe the other 95%. So the ratio of 95 to 5 is high. So that's a high ratio mortgage. If you're above like 20% or above, so if you're right at 20%, you've got 20% down payment, which means you owe 80% of the rest of the mortgage. Uh, so that's 80 to 20. So anything above that is considered a low ratio mortgage and don't and those mortgages don't require uh, insurance. So below 20%, typically what a bank or a financial institution will do is to take out insurance. And they'll get that insurance from places like CMHC, the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation, from Genworth and a couple of other places, um, basically to protect their exposure. So it was originally intended to give the banks and financial institutions a certain level of comfort when lending money to Canadians to help them buy homes because we really value home ownership here in Canada. It does help create more stable communities and a better economy overall. So that was the original intention there. So any mortgages that are less than 20%, banks can apply and apply to CMHC and that. And if CMHC approves based on the, the person who's App applying's uh, financial status and all that sort of thing, uh, then the bank will get uh, a more uh, insurance for that mortgage. And if for some reason uh, the person defaulted on their mortgage, the, the what amount of money that the bank is losing on that mortgage is limited. Right now it's around 10%, 15%, and they're looking at pushing that a little bit higher to about 20%. But for now, that's roughly where it is. And then the insurance would cover the balance if necessary. Uh, so if you're above that, you don't typically need insurance. So anything above, if you have a substantial down payment, if you have 20% down on a $500,000 home, that means you're putting down a $100,000 down payment on a $500,000 home. You're considered to be relatively low risk because you have a, such a large investment. Uh, so you don't really need insurance. People don't. People do default on them, but at a lower rate than people with lower down payments. At least that's the thinking. Um, so that's what's happening there. So previously, anybody below 20% had to go through what's called a stress test. This was put in. Most institutions were doing this anyways, but back in the spring, if you remember a video we posted there, uh, most institutions are now they were a new government regulation came along that they had to go through a stress test so that if you were applying for a mortgage and the bank was giving you a mortgage at 2.2%, um, you could eventually get the mortgage at 2%, but you had to qualify for that mortgage at 2% higher or the bank's uh, posted rate, the average 
posted rate, which was closer to 4.4 to 4.6%. So as long as you could qualify for the mortgage at 4.4 to 4.6%, you could get the mortgage that the institution was going to give you at 2%. And that makes sense because the, the government was uh, securing these mortgages through the insurance program, and they're looking at protecting their money, essentially, on what is considered a high-risk product. Now, they've sort of extended that or decided to extend that as of January 1st to the uninsured mortgages. So anybody who's putting down 20% or more on their mortgage, uh, you're going to have to go through the same stress test. So what that does is, uh, as we're going to go see through here, I'll just pull it up here. And you can read it for yourself if you like. Since the transitions, there you go. So the guideline B20 as put out by OSFI. So they put out guidelines for institutions to tell them how they should judge people's credit history and, and criteria to set for people. So this new guideline that they've put out requires that the minimum qualifying rate for uninsured mortgages to be the greater of either the five-year benchmark rate, that's the, the Bank of Canada posted rate, they average out the rate being posted by the, the major banks and then they post an average benchmark rate that's published by the Bank of Canada, or the contractual mortgage rate plus 2%. So again, if you were able to get that mortgage at 2%, it would be 2 plus that 2% for the stress test, or the Bank of Canada posted rate, whichever one is higher. So if the Bank of Canada posted rate is, again, 4.4%, you're actually having to qualify at 2.4% higher rate to get that mortgage. Right now, mortgage rates are around 3%. So this is the numbers that we're gonna do. So I went online this morning, and went to uh, Rate Hub. I've never actually used Rate Hub, I have to say. They don't sponsor me or give me any money or promote, ask me to promote them or anything like that. I just happened to, uh, to find them online, so I thought I would use their, their numbers here. And I'm just going to pull that up here as well so I can actually see what I'm saying here. And basically, so we just put in a bunch of basic numbers here. So the average household income here in Hamilton is roughly $80,000 for a household income, and that's including the entire city. Uh, here in Bimbrook, I believe it's 110,000 per household, but in, on average for the city, it's somewhere between 70 and 80,000 a year. So we used 80,000 a year, um, as you can see, as the annual income. We just included it for one person instead of dividing up to two people. And then on Rate Hub, as you'll see on the right hand side of the screen, they'll fill in a bunch of stuff if you ask them to, like what your estimated property taxes are going to be per month, um, your condo fees, if any, which we don't have any included here, and heating costs and that sort of thing. So they've estimated a bunch of numbers in there. And what they're going to do is tell us what we can afford based on that income and how much of a down payment we're going to put in. So we're looking at putting in a minimum 20% because that's the uninsured mortgage. And we're going to find out exactly how much we can afford. So as we mentioned, I'm going to flip this over as well. There we go. So in the left hand side, you'll see all the different criteria, your down payment, the CMHC insurance, if any applies, which in this case it doesn't because we're putting in greater than 20% down payment, the total mortgage that's required, the amortization period, which we have set at 30 years. That's the total length of time that you have to pay back your mortgage, not the term. The term is just like usually three to five years before you have to renew your mortgage. But the overall amortization period is how long the mortgage is stretched out for. In this case, it's 30 years. And then the mortgage rate. So you can see in the left-hand column, I have included a, a rate that's about average for today, 3.0%. And as you can see at the top of the screen, your maximum affordability is $557,921. Saying that you could purchase a house that's roughly $558,000, so long as you're putting down that 20% down payment, which amounts to $111,584. $111, so just under $112,000. And that's at a 3% mortgage rate. So that could be what you're looking at purchasing. You're looking at purchasing a home where you negotiated the price to about 560,000 at 3%. And so long as you have that $112,000 down payment, plus the other ancillary costs, you do have other closing costs like property tax and land transfer taxes and a few other things, lawyer fees and whatnot. Um, but basically this is what you're looking at and you can go ahead and purchase that home. Your mortgage when you walk away will be $446,000 or thereabouts after you put in your down payment and that's the amount that you'll pay off for that 30 year amortization period. With the new rules however, you can still get that mortgage but you have to qualify for it at a higher rate. So if, the po if you're getting a rate of 3% on your mortgage, 
the stress test is that rate plus 2% or the Bank of Canada rate, whichever is higher. So in this case, if the Bank of Canada rate is 4.4 or 4.6%, 3 plus 2 is 5, it's still higher than 4.6. So you need to be able to qualify at a 5% rate. At a 5% rate, if you only have that $112,000 down payment, which we've carried over, um, and we've done a 30-year amortization as well, what you can afford actually goes down. So the max that you can afford based on this model from RateHub is $478,000, which is almost $80,000 less. So you're, if you're trying to pass this stress test, you failed. So if you're at the max of your affordability, if you're at, trying to purchase this house, it's $560,000, that $112,000 down payment is the most that you can afford, you can't buy that house because you're not going to be able to pass that stress test come January 1st. If you go ahead before January 1st, you definitely can. We're still trying to wait for some information to find out how closing dates are affected. So if it's going to apply to a mortgage that was finalized before January 1st, or if the closing date has to be before January 1st, so you take possession of the home before January 1st, or if you can purchase the home before January 1st, 2018, and then not close until January and still not have to go through that stress test. We're still not really sure. We're just trying to get that information. The announcement was just made this morning, but we thought we'd present it to you here. So if you're looking to purchase a home and you're at the top of price range of what you can afford in that $560,000 range, um, and you really can't budge from there, you, you're better off purchasing a home before the end of the year and closing on it. Otherwise, as, as you can see on the chart here, what you can afford is going to drop by about 14%. In this case, about $80,000, which is roughly 14% less than, you, than what you could afford right now as of January 1st. So time to get a move on, jump on your horse, go talk to your mortgage specialist and talk to a realtor like myself and get out there and start looking. And now is a really a good time to start looking. And here's why. If you look at the numbers in Hamilton right now, we've actually moved into an almost a buyer's market. Uh, a balanced market is when you look at things like sales to new listings ratio. So if you take the listing, how many sales there have been, so if there have been five sales in a month, just for easy numbers, and then if you look at the new listings that come up and there are 10 new listings, five over 10 is 50%, it's half. Um, so if you're in between the 40 to 60% range, it's considered a balanced market. You are getting some inventory building up, but you do have buyers interested. There is a certain amount of demand and things are turning over at a decent pace. So you're in what's called a balanced market. Uh, if you're below 40%, you're in a buyer's market. So you have very few sales, like say two sales, and you have 10 new listings coming on. So your ratio is 20%. So you're below 40%, you're in what's called a buyer's market. If you're above 60%, so you have eight or nine sales a month and only 10 new listings coming on. So your ratio is 80 or 90%. You have what's called a seller's market. And that's where we were at in the spring. Uh, we were at like 88% ratio. Right now in Hamilton, we're about 44%. So we're just barely what's we considered a balanced market. And that's an average for the entire city. That includes Stony Creek and Ancaster. It also actually includes Grimsby, I believe, and the Hamilton Burlington Board. Their numbers are included as well. It includes Burlington, of course, and Glanbrook and all of that. So if you look at different pockets of the city, it is definitely a buyer's market in those particular neighborhoods. So if you're down in the industrial sector and a couple spots on the mountain, you're definitely moved into a buyer's market, while some other areas are still a little bit of a seller's market in those really high demand areas. So it makes for a lot of inventory on the market right now. And it's a good opportunity that if you are looking to buy, to get into the market. So here's what's happened since spring. The median price of a home that sold in September was 466000 roughly. That's down 13% from the median back in April of 535000 So there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of demand back in the spring and very low supply, which created a lot of competition. When people compete with things, it's just like going to an auction and everybody's bidding on something and the price goes higher and higher and higher. Um, since then, things have calmed down. A lot of people purchased their homes. There have been a few uh, rate increases in the mortgage rates. 
Uh, a bunch of different rules were put in back in the spring, if you remember the Fair Housing Act that came through that we discussed back then as well, and people have kind of backed off. And this happens every year though. We peak in the spring, uh, it calms down through the summer, and now we're entering a second peak here in September, October. But that, that change in number of sales and prices happens every single year. This year, that change in price happens to be 13%, but it's still about 7% higher overall this September 2017 as compared to September 2016. So prices are still up this year, almost 10%, depending on what you're looking at. It's just a little bit lower than it was in the spring. So if we continue on, and so basically what I've said, supply is way up. Uh, so just anecdotally, I was looking over the weekend for a client for a four bedroom detached home on the Hamilton Mountain or in Mount Hope uh, with a fully finished basement and a, an attached garage and that sort of thing. And between $500,000 and $600,000 list price, I found 128 possible listings just on the Hamilton Mountain alone. So that's a lot of inventory. Um, and a lot of demand was sucked up back in the spring. A lot of people bought in the spring. So demand is on the low side. So it's basically a buyer's market. So if you're looking at getting into a property now, it's the best time of the year pretty much to do it. We are entering again, like I said, a busier period, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, so let's have a quick look at what's actually happening year over year. So the condo market, condos are up. The median price is up about 10% over September 2016. Detached houses are up about 5% and that's the median price. And that's again, including the entire city of Hamilton. So in different pockets, the pricing is different. Uh, so it's very important to have a look at the specific neighborhood that you're looking at living in. Talk to someone like myself to have a look at those numbers to tell you what's happening in that neighborhood to make sure that you don't overpay. Right. Sales overall, that's the sales numbers, are down 23% from September 2016. So there's a lot fewer sales than they were last year. Again, we're moving into that buyer's market. And we'll show you, as I mentioned, just to show you, I ain't lying. Here's the numbers from our appointment center. And you can see the little chart on the bottom um, that shows you the entire year on the far uh, right hand side is currently September 2017. And as you can see, there was a peak back in March and April and those were appointments booked. The sales peak usually follows just immediately after that. There's a lot of people booking appointments, looking at properties, and then there's a lot of people buying appointments. So the peak happened in March and April and May is when the sales peak happened. Then it kind of cooled off throughout the summer, stayed steady for a couple of months, and it got a lot less busy over the summer as people go on vacations, kids are out of school, all that sort of thing. But now that the kids are back in school, we're looking towards the end of September, and the numbers are increasing. For the last three weeks in a row, we've seen significant week-over-week -week increases in the percentage of appointments being booked uh, compared to the prior week. Last week, the number of appointments went up by about 20%. This week, they're up about 12% over last week. So it's continually increasing number of appointments throughout the month of September. And uh, we're going to skip over these ones here. The, here are the top districts last week. So these are the busiest districts in Hamilton. These are different areas in the Hamilton Mountain and East Hamilton. A lot of people in Hamilton were booking appointments in Mississauga. So we have listings out there as well. And in Lincoln, which is just, um, just west of here on the way to Niagara Falls. Uh, price ranges for, this, for the city of Hamilton. Here's what you're looking at. And that's not what you're looking at. This is what you're looking at. So in Hamilton, the number one price range for houses is three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand, and in Burlington, it's one to two million dollars. Those are the most popular uh, properties where people were booking appointments last year. These are not sales; these are appointments. So this is what people are out looking at. So in Hamilton, the number one price range was three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand. Number two was two hundred and fifty to three hundred. Again, you're sort of in uh, first-time buyer type category, entry-level type category. At this point, the average price in Hamilton, as we saw, was about 460000 closer to five hundred in some neighborhoods. So these numbers are more entry-level. Whereas in Burlington, the number one price is $1.2 million. And the number two is eight hundred to 900000 So a lot of luxury properties and more expensive properties are being looked at in Burlington and eventually sold as well. And that's about it for the numbers. I did want to mention this new website that we're developing called openhouseonline.ca. You can go there right now and I have my current listing at 91 San Pedro Drive there. And basically when you get there, second, this is the YouTube channel, but if you go to openhouseonline.ca, 
you'll see this. So this is a 3D Matterport tour of the home. So this is the inside of the home that's been scanned with a 3D camera. This is what's called the dollhouse view. And then you zoom in and you can actually use your mouse. I'm using my laptop right now, but you can actually tour the home. So even if you can't make it to the open house, you can walk around the home. You don't have to click on the circles. I usually do because that indicates where the camera was placed. But you can basically slide around to anywhere. Go up to the second floor, jump right down the hallway, right to the end of the bedrooms. There's a nicely staged little bedroom here at the end. And if you come down to the bottom, you can actually jump from one floor to the next, almost like an elevator effect. You can jump down there. This is a nice little family room set up on the second floor. You can see the ceilings, you can see the floors. Um, you can move right downstairs. So we can go right down to the bottom level here. And there's another family room set up in the basement. And again, you can walk through the entire house this way and just move around and see the house. Little bathroom set up and back upstairs. We can get back into the kitchen area here. So that is openhouseonline.ca. It's a service I include with all my listings, this 3D tour of the home along with the standalone website, etc. I'm just going to flip back to myself here. And here we go. So that's me. So that is openhouseonline.ca. Uh, currently, that's just the one listing that's, ha that's posted there. What eventually we will do is have a landing page that lists all of the different listings that we have. So you can access um, the, the walkthrough videos that we do, the 3D home tours as well. And you can kind of get all the information, the listing information for all the properties that we have for sale. We're just sort of developing it right now. But for the meantime, you can go out and check out um, 91 San Pedro Drive here in Hamilton. Go to 91sanpedro.com if you want the listing information or give me a shout. And I can definitely help you with that. Uh, I'm just looking to see if anybody's got any questions. There's a whole bunch of... Uh, Andrew, nobody is safe now, 20% or not. Yeah, that is very true. Everybody's going to have to go through this stress test now. It's going to be affecting everybody's ability to uh, to purchase a home. It's, I don't, in my own personal opinion, I think the, the government is overreaching. They're really trying to control how people are spending their money, which is something that we're supposed to be able to decide how to do. Um, this is not about the government's money or their insurance money. This is just about them trying to... Uh, trying to control the economy and uh, being afraid of what I believe is a lot of media hype over um, the bubble in the real estate market in Canada and that sort of thing. I just saw a friend of mine, Andrew Foliato, just posted the other day a cover of Toronto Life magazine from 2010, so over 70 years, seven years ago, that right on the cover says, we're in a bubble now, what do we do? So it's been seven years or more of them telling us that we're in a real estate bubble, and here we are. And we're still here. Things are still ticking along. Prices are fluctuating. The markets will correct. Um, prices will go up and down as supply hits the market. Prices come down. That's just always the way that it works. So that's my opinion there. Uh, any other questions here? I don't see any. So I'm going to stop talking because I've been talking for quite a while. Um, I am Tony. You all know me. I am the Geeky Agent. This is Remax Geek TV. I do appreciate you tuning in. We try to keep as many of these things going as possible throughout the week, usually during the lunch hour, sometimes in the afternoon around 2, 2.30 for break time, I guess, and sometimes during the evening just to see when people are available so they can catch us. The videos are posted here when we're done, uh, so you can find them here on my Facebook page. You can go to youtube.com slash thegeekyagent. The videos are posted there as well under our Facebook talk our Let's Talk Facebook Live video uh, playlist, so they'll be there for viewing as well. If you do have any questions for me at all, my camera just died a little bit, but it's okay. You can text or call me at 289-237-9896, or you can email me at tony at thegeekyagent.com. You know where I am. Um, I'd be happy to chat with you, go for a coffee, let you know what's happening in the real estate markets. 
If you are searching online, you can go to HamiltonLifestyleSearch.com or LifestyleHamilton.com. Either one will take you to the same website. If you click on the Lifestyle Search, you can be able or you will be able to look for a home based upon your commute time to work, what school you want to live nearby, what uh, neighborhood you want to live in, and all those more personal things in addition to the price of a home, um, number of bedrooms and bathrooms, and all the regular stuff that we normally search by. Uh, if you are on social media, which obviously you are because we're here on Facebook, you can find me at The Geeky Agent pretty much anywhere, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, on LinkedIn, you can find me at Tony Yacoviello. But if you search The Geeky Agent, you will find some of my posts come up there as well on Snapchat and on Facebook as well. And for today, that is pretty much it. I really do appreciate you all tuning in. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to chat with me. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Stay warm. It is cold, but by Saturday, we are expecting temperatures back in the 20 degree range. So it's going to be summertime all over again. And again, thank you all so much for being here. Love y'all. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.